The aim of this uh, meeting is uh, mainly as a solidarity with the Bolivarian uh, revolution and to oppose the attempt of the right wing and imperialism to overthrow the democratically elected government of President uh, Maduro. Uh, as you probably know, there are people in the room who might have different uh, levels of uh, information or knowledge about the current situation in Venezuela, but I think it's clear to everyone that Venezuela is at a very crucial uh, juncture. Since 1998, when uh, President Hugo Chavez was elected for the first uh, time, I would say this is probably the most uh, crucial time that the Bolivarian uh, Revolution has uh, faced. Uh, I'd like to introduce myself a little bit, just so that everyone knows where I'm coming uh, from and what my opinion uh, is. I, uh, I am a, I'm the secretary of the Hands of Venezuela campaign, as Ben uh, explained. The Hands of Venezuela campaign was set up in uh, 2002, uh, immediately after the opposition and imperialist uh, organized coup against the democratically elected of, uh, government of Hugo Chavez in April 2002. And uh, we thought uh, we had two ideas at that time. The first one is that it was very, um, it was very common that the uh, Latin American country elects a left-wing government and then uh, right-wing forces, the capitalists, the oligarchy, the landowners, the bankers, organize a military coup with the backing of imperialism, particularly at that time from the Spanish government and the, and the government in the US, but also other governments were, were involved. But what was not, uh, is not so common is that this coup lasted for such a short period of time, in less than 48 hours. Uh, ordinary people from Caracas and other places came down, gathered outside the military barracks and defeated the coup and brought back the democratically elected uh, president. So we started the campaign more or less at that uh, time in uh, 2002. Since 2002, I have uh, visited Venezuela frequently. Uh, and stayed for periods of uh, time participating in the Bolivarian uh, Revolution, particularly in the worker-occupied uh, factories uh, movement, which developed particularly after 2004-2005. And I have participated actively in the organization of the Hands of Venezuela campaign and the solidarity with the Bolivarian Revolution internationally. Uh, now, what's been happening over the last uh, two months, they have been now in Venezuela for nearly 60 days, approximately two months, constant, almost daily uh, protests against the government and also uh, demonstrations which have not been uh, 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 revealed or shown in, uh, in most of the Western uh, media, demonstrations in favor of the government. So there's a big uh, conflict. The anti-government demonstrations have uh, gathered uh, large numbers of, uh, of people on a regular basis. And this is not the first time. There have been big opposition demonstrations uh, before, uh, in 2014, uh, after the election of uh, President uh, Maduro. But also in uh, September, October, November last year, there was another wave of opposition uh, demonstrations. And it's quite clear to anyone who wants to uh, observe the situation, that there is a large body of opinion against the government of uh, Maduro. Perhaps hundreds of thousands of people are gather, gathered re on a regular basis in uh, different parts of the country uh, against it. But uh, it's also true that, in my opinion, the mass media over here, the BBC, the Guardian, main newspapers, the CNN, they're giving a very one-sided, partial, and I will say because of that, uh, not truthful uh, appraisal of what is happening in uh, Venezuela. The other day, there was, a, there was a, a headline on the BBC World uh, News website which said uh, the number of uh, opposition protesters killed by government repression reaches 43. Now, this is, uh, this is false. This is not the case. Uh, 43 people have been killed. I think the, the number now is bigger perhaps 50 or 53, depending on, on how you, you count them. Some people were, were included in the, in the figures, some people are not. But this is a large number of people who have been killed in these two months of uh, protest. But it is false to say that these uh, people have all been killed by government repression. In fact, if you break down the figures, you will see that this is not the case. And the, by saying that, you give a very one-sided, distorted view of what is really happening in, uh, in uh, Venezuela. There are different um, uh, studies that have been made about who killed uh, the different uh, people who have died over this uh, period of time. Uh, but one that I, uh, that I uh, saw 
which was published in Venezuela analysis, breaks down all the people who have been killed with names, uh, instances, uh, places where they were killed and the circumstances of their killing and whether they support one or other side in this uh, conflict. They basically reach uh, the following uh, conclusion. These are obviously uh, rough st estimates and some, some figures may not be completely uh, correct, but it gives you a general uh, picture of what is happening in Venezuela. 13 people have been killed uh, of these uh, 40 to 50 uh, people who have been killed in the last two months directly as victims of opposition political uh, violence. And these include, I'll just give you two or three examples, a uh, youngster, 14 years of age, Brian uh, Principal, who was killed in, uh, in uh, Barquisimeto, Lara. He was uh, not part of any protest, but he is an inhabitant of the Ciudad Socialista Ali Primera, uh, a government-built uh, housing uh, project. And he was sent by his mom to, to look for some food, to buy some uh, uh, empanadas at the entrance of the, the housing uh, complex. And at that time, there were opposition uh, uh, protesters who were shooting at this uh, housing uh, complex, just because this housing complex had been built by the Bolivarian uh, Revolution. And this uh, young uh, person, this teenager, uh, had the misfortune of being caught in the, in the fire and he was killed. So this is one of the people, for instance, who have been uh, killed in this uh, list. There's also Luis Alberto uh, Marquez, 52-year-old uh, worker from the governorship of Mérida in uh, the state of uh, Mérida in the Andean uh, region, who was shot dead together with a comrade of his, workmate of his. One was shot in the neck, the other one was shot in the, in the head by firearm, by gunfire coming from the opposition uh, protesters uh, while they were uh, in a small uh, picket or rally defending the Bolivarian uh, uh, revolution. These people also include, for instance, Almelina Carrillo, a nurse from uh, Caracas who was not part of any protest but was passing by the Chavista demonstration on the 19th of uh, April where they were big pro and against uh, an anti-government uh, uh, demonstrations in Caracas. She was just passing by on her way to work and someone from a, from a, big, uh, from a block of flats threw a bottle of frozen water, hit her in the head and she uh, died eventually in, uh, in uh, hospital. An opposition figure, a few days earlier, had encouraged in a tweet people to throw pot plants at, uh, at Chavista demonstrators when they were passing uh, below uh, your buildings. So, uh, uh, the, obviously, the, the, the throwing of this uh, frozen water bottle was not accidental, it had been aimed at the demonstration, and uh, this uh, nurse, 32-year-old, uh, 33-year-old nurse had the misfortune of being at the wrong uh, time, at the wrong uh, place, and she was killed. And this up to 13, can someone get some uh, uh, water? Uh, this up to the 13 uh, people, oh no, I, I think I have some water. This up to the 13 uh, people who were killed in this uh, list, is considered to be directly as a result of uh, uh, opposition uh, uh, political violence. Another five people in this uh, list were killed indirectly as a result of uh, political violence by the opposition. These are people who, for instance, attempted to avoid a barricade or road uh, block and hit a tree people who were going the wrong way round up the motorway uh, entrance uh, because there was uh, an opposition barricade and two cars collided, one person was uh, killed. Five of those were killed in these uh, circumstances. Eight people were directly killed by agents of uh, the authority, by police officers, National Guard officers and so on. Eight out of 40 or 50 people who have been uh, killed. But these include also uh, the case of uh, a youngster killed in El Paraíso uh, immediately after the demonstrations on the 19th of April, who was killed, has now been found out, by a uh, police officer from Polisucre, which is a, a municipality which is dominated by the opposition. We don't know why this person uh, acted in this way. He was out of service. He was not, uh, 
he was not in his duties as a police officer, but he, he is included in this list of people uh, who were killed by police uh, officers. In all of these eight cases, the police uh, officers involved have been arrested and are being uh, prosecuted. Another eight people have been killed uh, accidentally as an indirect result of the general uh, situation. And these include, and these are, I mean, these, are, uh, uh, these eight people are eight people who were looting a shop in El Valle uh, on, on, at the end of uh, April, and they attempted to remove a fridge from the building. Uh, the building was flooded, uh, cable fell on the water, and they died by electrocution. So, but this sometimes included, sometimes not included as, as uh, part of the general list. There are four police officers who have been killed by, uh, mostly by sniper fire. Uh, in different parts of the country. One in San Antonio de los, de los Altos, two in uh, Carabobo. I mean, these are police uh, officers. In some cases, they were part of containing or, or containing opposition demonstrations. In some cases, uh, in the case of San Antonio de los Altos, this one police officer was not uh, on duty, he was just going to his uh, home, and he was killed when he was leaving a, a bus, a local bus in uh, San Antonio de, de los Altos. And uh, there are another 20 people who are unaccounted, one way or another, the, the, is disputed who killed them, in what circumstances they were killed, and uh, so on. There, there are also a number of other people who have been killed, but run over by cars, at uh, barricades, and things like this. Uh, but, but I mean, this, even though it doesn't account for all the deaths, gives you a general idea that is not true. It's simply not true what the BBC was saying, that 53 people have been killed by government repression. This is not true. Uh, it's false, in fact. Uh, and therefore gives a, a wrong impression of what is really happening in uh, Venezuela. The, the mass media also try to give the idea that what we're seeing in Venezuela are peaceful anti-government demonstrations. The demonstrators are demonstrating for democracy, against uh, the scarcity of uh, food, for hunger, and, and stuff like that. This is, uh, I will say, only partially true. There have been, in the last 60 days, plenty of uh, uh, peaceful opposition demonstrations. Uh, some of them, as I said before, very, very big. But there have also been uh, lots of violence coming from opposition uh, demonstrations. And over the last 60 days, you see the following uh, pattern. There is, a, there is a peaceful opposition demonstration. Uh, this opposition demonstration tries to then march onto some government building, these government buildings that they want to march to, like the Supreme Court, the National Electoral Court, the State Defender or Ombudsman, uh, the State uh, Prosecutor. Most of these buildings are located in the center or the west of uh, Caracas. Now, at the beginning, these demonstrations were allowed. They had a permit to go to these uh, buildings, but the first time they went, around the, 18th, the 19th of, uh, of April, what happened was, that uh, they, they, uh, groups of people from the opposition demonstration attacked the building of the Supreme Court and attempted to burn it uh, down. They broke through the doors at the ground, they threw Molotov cocktails, they threw incendiary devices inside, and the building was on fire. From that point on, the government has not given permission, and the, and the Caracas uh, Libertador Municipality has not given permission to any opposition demonstrations to go to those uh, buildings. You might argue that this is justified or not, but this is what's happened. The opposition demonstrations have nevertheless attempted to go to these places and have been met by lines of uh, National Guard and anti-riot police using uh, large, large amounts of tear gas and uh, water cannons to prevent them from going to these other places. And this has led to enormous amount of violence uh, on the part of opposition demonstration. <coughs> demonstrators. Not all of them are violent, but there is clearly, a, a, let's say, a, a vanguard at the, at the front of these demonstrations. They are clearly equipped uh, with, uh, sometimes with very expensive uh, equipment, uh, very uh, modern uh, tear gas uh, masks, uh, GoPro uh, cam cameras, and uh, all the stuff like that, and prepared to attack the, the National uh, Guard. In some cases, they have also used homemade explosive uh, devices and uh, rocket uh, launches and so on. Some people might find this funny, but I'm trying to describe a situation which you have not read in the BBC, The Guardian, and, uh, and so on. And so this, this is what is uh, happening. I could, I could give you many different examples of this. 
but I will just give you a few. For instance, a few days ago, the National Guard uh, barracks in uh, La Grita, in Táchira, were attacked by demonstrators, violent opposition demonstrators, and set on fire. Now, uh, th this, this is not a normal peaceful uh, demonstration. This is uh, an attempt at an insurrection. Now, you, you could argue whether this insurrection is legitimate, justified or not, but this is not a case of a peaceful uh, movement against uh, a government. This is a case of an insurrection movement as uh, a quiet insurrectionary uh, uh, characteristics. For instance, uh, educational institutions have been attacked and set on fire. Uh, same with uh, military installations, for instance, the La Carlota Air, military air base in the east of uh, Caracas has been attacked twice with incendiary and, uh, and explosive uh, devices. Burning barricades have been set out uh, outside the maternity hospitals in El Valle and in San Antonio de los Altos in Carrizal. Uh, which have led to the evacuation of these uh, two uh, hospitals on two different uh, occasions. Public transport units have been set on fire. The latest case, uh, two days ago, 50 uh, buses from uh, Trans uh, Bolivar were set on fire at the uh, depot. Uh, homemade firearms and explosive devices have been uh, used. And I don't know, some of you might have seen, not on the BBC, but on social media in the last few days, how a person who was in a, inside an opposition demonstration on uh, Saturday or Sunday, I can't remember the exact uh, day, but it was this uh, weekend, was identified as an infiltrator, they said, or as a thief, others uh, say, and was uh, dosed with uh, petrol and set on fire. Uh, so this is not really uh, a peaceful democratic uh, uh, movement. But the other thing that the, government, that the mass media is not uh, telling us, not telling you, is the fact that while these demonstrations are going on, uh, Venezuela is not, a, is not a situation where the whole of the population is against the government and the government is resisting by force. Is a, there is a situation where there is also a large number of people who defend the government, who are against this uh, opposition, who are against foreign uh, intervention for one reason or, or another. When I was in uh, Caracas, actually, uh, it coincided with uh, May Day. And on May Day, there were two big demonstrations. There was a big opposition demonstration in the east of Caracas. There was also a big uh, pro-Bolivarian demonstration organized by Bolivarian trade unions in the center of uh, Caracas. I participated in this demonstration and I took some uh, uh, footage and you can see it. I've put it on, uh, on uh, the Hands of Venezuela website. And you can see clearly this was a large demonstration. Uh, I'm not very good at numbers, but the whole of the Bolivar Avenue was uh, full for about four or five uh, hours. And not only this, but lots of people were coming in and lots of people were going uh, out. Uh, and it was quite packed from the beginning to the end. I walked the whole distance just to make sure that the whole thing was uh, full. And uh, these people uh, were coming from different uh, parts of Caracas and neighboring states. There were some people from Vargas, I saw some people from Miranda. I saw also workers who were coming from other parts of the country, from the basic industries in Guayana, Sidor, uh, Alcázar, uh, Benalum and other factories. Uh, there were people working, workers from the Valencia metro and other, other groups of workers that were coming from different parts of the country uh, with the idea of celebrating May Day, International Workers' Day, and also to defend the government against these uh, opposi opposition uh, uh, demonstrations. This, I would challenge anyone, has not been shown anywhere on the BBC, The Guardian, or any of the big mass media in this country or any, anywhere else. Not, not even despite the fact that uh, Maduro made an important announcement at the May Day demonstration. So they mentioned, Maduro said that they're gonna, he's going to call for a constituent assembly. They don't mention the demonstration, they don't mention the size of the demonstration or the reason why uh, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people also gathered against these opposition uh, uh, demonstrations. Now, in my opinion, also, there's another important uh, fact that uh, we need to uh, understand if we want to understand what is the situation in Venezuela and what is the balance of uh, forces. As I, as I already indicated, most of the opposition demonstrations take place in the east of the capital, uh, where the middle class and middle upper class uh, areas are concentrated, and there are very few that take place in other parts of the, of the city, in more working class and poor areas. I, for instance, uh, stayed 
in a place called El Guarataro in the west of uh, Caracas in San Martin. And this is a working class poor uh, neighborhood and there have been no opposition demonstrations uh, there. There was one uh, yesterday with about 20 people. Uh, and this is the extent in this uh, big place, uh, thousands of people live up the, this uh, hill, uh, that the opposition has support in this uh, place. And this does not mean that the people in these working class poor areas do not suffer as well from the scarcity of uh, medicines, from the scarcity of uh, food and other things like this. But uh, most commentators will uh, agree that there is a strong mistrust on the part of people in the barrios, people in the working class and poor areas, towards the people who are leading and participating in this opposition uh, demonstration, particularly the leadership of the opposition. Because uh, then we come, to the, we come to the point that there is obviously two sides in uh, Venezuela and uh, very, very, uh, there's, a, there's a big confrontation between two different uh, <coughs> sides. These sides represent different uh, social classes and they also represent different political views about the country. Uh, the opposition demonstrators say that they are for democracy, that they're fighting a, a dictatorship. But as a matter of fact, if you look at uh, what the leaders are, what the leaders want and what the leaders demand, you will see that this is not really uh, true. Uh, Julio Borges, for instance, is one of the main leaders of the opposition. He is now the president of the National uh, Assembly. Uh, and he himself was part of the 2002 coup against uh, Chavez. He has no democratic uh, credentials in that sense. Uh, Enrique Capriles, the opposition governor of uh, Miranda and also one of the opposition uh, leaders, was also part of that coup in 2002. Some of the other opposition leaders are too young to have participated in the 2002 coup, but they are also part of the same uh, parties, same group of uh, people who carried out the, the, the coup against the democratically elected government in 2002. And, and you, don't have to, uh, you don't have to guess these things. Uh, Julio Borges was interviewed in the BBC just a few days ago in a program called Hard Talk that uh, is online, people can uh, uh, listen to it. And uh, when the interviewer uh, said to him, look, but uh, the government says that what you're doing uh, is organizing a coup and that you carried out the coup in 2002 and that you receive money from the United States, your party receives money from the United States. And he didn't deny any of these things. And he was then asked point blank, so are you asking the army uh, people, the army officers, to disobey orders from the government? Uh, and he said, absolutely. I can give you the, the exact quote, but you can uh, also listen to it. On, it's, on, it's online. On, uh, so, I mean, uh, to my uh, understanding, if you basically appealing to the army to intervene and remove the democratically elected president, that is uh, a coup. Uh, it's not democratic uh, uh, protest. But, but also there's another person, Maria Corina Machado, who is one of, also one of the main figureheads of the opposition. Perhaps she's uh, from amongst the most radical, say, or most extreme uh, leaders of the, of the opposition. But she also commands quite a lot of support amongst the opposition uh, demonstrators. I think no one will, will deny that. She was uh, writing a, an article just about three weeks uh, ago, and she basically said, the more the government uh, is against the ropes, as she said, and I'm quoting now, the danger increases equally that we lose sight of what is essential. Our aim is not to have elections. She said, she said, our aim is not to have elections within the framework of the criminal regime of Maduro. Our aim is to put an end to this regime and to then open the space for an orderly transition to organize elections in a different institutional uh, context. The first step is to overthrow the regime. Otherwise, there will never be democracy in Venezuela. Now, you can agree or disagree with this, but this is not a demand for elections. This is a demand for the overthrow of the, of the government, quite uh, clearly. Uh, now, this brings me to another, to another point. So then you will uh, ask, so if the government is not a dictatorship, why doesn't it call elections? Well, there are elections uh, next year. In 2018, the mandate of the president finishes, and, and he has said very recently, come, come rain, thunderstorm, or shine, there will be presidential elections next year. Now, you might uh, think that he is just trying to fool the people or whatever, but in any case, the term of office 
for his uh, mandate that he was elected for finishes next year. Uh, and then you can ask, so why hasn't there been, why, why hasn't there been a recall referendum, which is something that uh, was uh, contemplated in the Bolivarian uh, Constitution of 1999, and that all elected officials doesn't exist in this uh, country. Never mind the fact that in this country the head of state is not uh, elected, but uh, hereditary. But uh, this exists in Venezuela. You can uh, start a process, trigger a process, collect signatures, and have a recall referendum for any elected uh, public uh, official, including the president, uh, halfway his or her term of office. Uh, and in fact, the opposition, after many discussions, because when the opposition won the 2015 December National Assembly elections by, by a large uh, majority, they said, our aim is we're going we're gonna to get rid of uh, Maduro in six months. Uh, vamos a salir de Maduro in six meses. And they believed that they could uh, achieve that. Despite the fact that Maduro was still... Uh, and so then, they elected the president at that time. Then they started concocting all sorts of different plans of how to get rid of Maduro. There was a proposal, imagine this, there was a proposal for a constitutional amendment that will shorten the term of office of the president. Which is completely absurd because, uh, because you, you cannot change the term of office of a president that's already sitting. You might want to introduce that for, for the next president, but not for the current uh, one. There was also another allegation uh, that Maduro is not a Venezuelan. In fact, he was somehow born in uh, Colombia and uh, therefore he is not eligible to be president. He should be removed on those uh, grounds. Anyone who remembers the, the, the way they would try to remove uh, Obama uh, in the United States, exactly the same uh, argument. There was another argument that the opposition-dominated National Assembly has used, and that is that uh, President Maduro has voided, has vacated his office. Uh, now, you cannot say that Maduro is clinging to power uh, by uh, repressive means, and at the same time he's vacated his office. You can't say the two things at the same time. But, but the National Assembly has said this. Last year, in October, they passed a resolution saying this, and in January this year, they passed a resolution saying, uh, saying that he has vacated his uh, office. Which is a very absurd um, and undemocratic uh, argument. Finally, they managed to get the act together and they said, okay, we're going to go for a recall referendum. But when they presented the signatures for the recall referendum, three different regional uh, courts challenged those signatures. They said there were about 50,000 of those who were uh, illegitimate in one way or another. They were, missing, uh, they were missing information. The information didn't correspond with the person. Their people were dead, were in the list of signatures. There were so many irregularities that the National Electoral Council demanded that in those three states, not everywhere, but in those three states, collection of signatures should, be, should take place again. At that time, the opposition accepted an offer of negotiations that was brokered by the Vatican um, mission in Venezuela, by the former president of Spain and by the former president of the Dominican Republic. There were talks and they completely forgot about the recall uh, referendum. They didn't go for following the legal procedure for challenging these three states where their signatures had been challenged. And now nobody, nobody talks about the recall referendum uh, anymore. Uh, in any case, in one year, there will be uh, uh, presidential uh, elections. Now, uh, not only this, but there's another important point that we need to understand if we want to understand what is the character of this uh, opposition. The opposition has controlled the National Assembly since December 2015, where they won a majority. And because of the Venezuelan electoral system, this time went in their favor. And, and, and they got uh, an almost two-third uh, majority. So, so they have lots of uh, power in the National Assembly to pass laws and, and so on. And how have they used these uh, powers? I mean, uh, there are two main laws that they have moved. There are, there are maybe three or four. They have, they have not used the power of the National Assembly too much. But there are two or three significant laws that they have passed that gives us an idea of who they are, what they want. One law was the law of amnesty. In this law of amnesty, if you read it, uh, you, you, your hair will stand up. Because what it basically says is that any crimes, and it says, including uh, drug dealing, including violence against uh, people, including uh, violence against official uh, buildings, the destruction of property and so on, will be um, amnestied, anyone who's committed to them, for a political reason. I mean, I don't, know, I don't know about you, but I mean, drug dealing 
how can you commit drug dealing, uh, an offense of drug dealing, for a political reason? I'm not, uh, I'm not too sure how that, how that applies. You're a liar, you're a liar. Oi, listen, this is a democratic, this is a democratic meeting, mate. I know very well what I'm talking about. No, no, uh, no, no, no. The structure of this meeting, which we organized, Let's listen. Let's listen and then ask yes. things because I think yes. we, we Thank have you very much. Okay. I'm sure you have. No, no, not before. Sit down, mate. Sit down. Yes, sit down. 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 That is that in the last few weeks there has been organized uh, what, the, what the Venezuelan opposition in their rage and their impotence also because they haven't uh, overthrown uh, the government. And, and I will say they haven't overthrown the government I will say for two reasons. One is because they have not achieved uh, the aim of breaking the army. The army has not uh, broken for whatever reasons but they obviously make making appeals to different people in the army to break with the government and this is one thing Anyone who uh, knows anything about the revolution, say the, the Arab revolution in uh, Egypt in uh, January 2011 won when the army was no longer prepared to fire on the demonstrators and, uh, and, and, uh, and defend the regime of uh, Mubarak. So they haven't achieved this yet. Uh, and, and they haven't achieved another thing. They haven't achieved that the people beyond the normal uh, circles, the people in the working class and poor areas in the barrios of Caracas, join their demonstrations. If, if they manage to do that, they will overthrow this uh, government. But this has not happened. I don't know whether it's going to happen or not, but it has definitely not happened in any significant numbers so far. Otherwise, the government will not have a leg to stand uh, on. And this, and this uh, leads me to this point. Because of their rage and their impotence at having been on the streets for two months, not achieving their aims, they have now started to organize a lynch mob against anyone who is a Chavista or looks like a Chavista or might be a Chavista in Venezuela and abroad. There have been threats of violence, the publication of people's personal uh, uh, residence uh, details in many different countries. In Madrid, a mob of uh, opposition uh, supporters surrounded and besieged uh, a building belonging to the Venezuelan embassy in uh, Madrid, didn't allow anyone out for fear of their physical uh, integrity for five hours. Uh, this is not a democratic uh, opposition, this is a lynch mob. Uh, and this is the only way in which it can be described. And this has happened uh, across, the, across the country. And, and the other day on, on Sunday, there was, uh, there was a bus going because people, uh, there are some people who are demonstrating, there are some people who are trying to go about their daily uh, lives. Uh, going to work, going back from work, going to study, going back. So there was a bus and there was someone in this bus with a red shirt. So uh, a group of opposition uh, thugs, people in uh, gas masks and, uh, and helmets and so on, boarded this uh, bus, stopped the bus, boarded this bus, they wanted to set it uh, fire. And they said, and that guy is a Chavista, because he was wearing a red uh, shirt, and said, yeah, I'm a Chavista, so what? He was beaten up, and, and he was not uh, killed, because at that time they might, might not have uh, petrol. But uh, in other cases, they have uh, set people on uh, fire. This is a lynch mob, uh, an, an angry, and uh, an enraged, petty bourgeois uh, uh, crowd, gang. Now, the final point I, will, uh, I wanted to explain uh, is this. Uh, and, and this goes more to the, to the heart of the, of, the, of the question. There are clearly two sides in Venezuela. One which is a reactionary uh, side. Uh, and, and if you want to know what's, what will happen in Venezuela if the opposition wins, the, the, the overthrows the, the government, you just have to look at what's happening now in Brazil and Argentina. Uh, Right-wing governments have uh, come to power in Brazil and Argentina, in Argentina through democratic elections, in uh, Brazil through a constitutional uh, trick or coup, uh, and they have immediately implemented a massive program 
of a tax on social uh, welfare. In, in uh, Brazil, it's particularly the attack on uh, pensions. And in uh, Argentina, the massive uh, layoff of uh, uh, public sector workers, hundreds of thousands have been uh, thrown out. And this has led to a big movement of the workers in these uh, countries against this. And if uh, the lynch mob that's been created in the last few weeks is anything to go by, if these people, some of them in this uh, room, come to power in Venezuela, they will not establish a democracy. They will establish a lynch mob. Anyone who's a Chavista will fear for their lives. Democratic freedoms will be uh, suppressed. And they will be completely uh, uh, eradicated because because, because that's what happened every time they've uh, come to power in one country after another. My last point is this. Uh, the, one, the other point that we have to deal with, not, not with them, but uh, with ourselves, is why is it that uh, the Bolivarian Revolution has lost so much support in the recent uh, years? Bolivarian Revolution won 18... Because you are a the, the, rev the Venezuelan Revolution... The, the Venezuelan Revolution won 18 out of 19 democratic elections uh, between 1998 and 2015, until it lost the, the National Assembly elections. That was the, sec or the second only election being lost in 19 uh, years. Now, the opposition, some of whom are here in this room, never recognized any of those uh, elections. They said, they said, they said that Chavez was a dictator, as, as the lady here confirms. All the way right, all the way right for 19, for 19 years. Okay, but you will get shots If you keep, if you keep interrupting me, if you keep interrupting me, uh, the, the same authorities that ruled over these uh, 19 uh, elections are the same authorities that ruled over the opposition victory in the National Assembly in December 2015. The opposition was quite happy to recognize their victory, but they were also very adamant that none of the other elections had been uh, legitimate, which obviously is a contradiction. Uh, but, but, but the truth is, that uh, up until 2015, 2014, 2015, there was massive support for the Bolivarian uh, Revolution, and that's the reason why it stayed in power for so uh, long. Uh, and what is the reason why this changed around that uh, time? And I will say that uh, the, economic, the economic crisis is the main uh, factor. Price of oil went down from 100, 110, or 120 dollars a barrel to uh, at the lowest point last year was $27 a barrel. And this made it impossible for the government to maintain the same level of social spending that it had been maintaining uh, before. The conquest of the revolution are many, and even though the opposition don't like to recognize them, uh, I, will, I will now uh, mention them. For instance, uh, uh, people... For instance, people receiving... People going to higher education increased from 800,000 in 98 to 2.6 million in 2013. Poverty was massively reduced, half, and extreme poverty was more than half. More than half. Illiteracy was eradicated in 2005 when 1.5 million people participated in the mission. Uh, Robinson learned the basics of how to read and write. Uh, privatized utilities and state, uh, privatized state enterprises were renationalized, including SIDOR uh, and uh, others. There was a large uh, and vibrant experience of workers' uh, control and workers' uh, management in the, in the factories. And this is really what solidified the support for the Bolivarian Revolution all that time. But this was done, some people say, what has failed in uh, Venezuela is socialism. But I will say, this was not socialism. Capitalism was still very much uh, alive in Venezuela. The banking system, the main industries, the food distribution, the food distribution and production chain. The food distribution and production chain. Now, it is, it is a fact, it is a fact, it is a fact that half, it is a fact that even today, half of the capacity for production of uh, maize uh, flour uh, for making arepa is in the hands of one company. Polar, Grupo Polar, Polar Industries, controls a large part, a monopoly part, of the food distribution and production in Venezuela. This is something that if you deny that, 
then uh, I think some people are more beyond reality than what I originally uh, thought. Now, can I finish? Okay. If you let me finish. Can you finish? It would, it would finish quicker finish if you stop the drop. Say only 40 minutes. Yeah. And it hasn't been 40 minutes yet. I have a question for you. We want to be respectful and we... And we and it doesn't seem that way to me. It doesn't seem that way to me. I've been interrupted okay. like five or six times. Okay, okay so I can't. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. Carry on. Just wait. Thank you. So what I was trying to explain is that there is, a, there is a deep economic crisis in Venezuela now. No one can deny that. The, the economy has collapsed by 25 or 30 percent in the last three or four uh, years. Oil prices, as I said, have massively uh, collapsed. And, uh, and this also meant, has meant that the, the main source of the country's hard currency reserves has evaporated. So hard currency reserves have gone down from about 30,000 uh, million, uh, 30, 30, uh, 30 billion uh, dollars two, three years ago to about 10 billion dollars now. It's, it's going down very rapidly. The government, and I don't necessarily agree with this, I, I disagree actually with this, is keeps paying the foreign debt religiously. Like uh, in April, in the middle of all this protest, the government paid a tranche of the foreign uh, debt, three billion uh, dollars. This means that the, the amount of money available for imports has massively reduced. Uh, has reduced by, by about 50 percent between 2015 and 2016. And this is one, but only one, of the main causes of scarcity of basic food uh, products. The other, the, other, uh, the other cause is the enormous amount of uh, speculation, black marketeering, hoarding and sabotage of the production uh, of food and other basic uh, products carried out by the capitalists. Uh, the capitalists ask the government for subsidized uh, dollars at 10 bolivars per dollar, the system subsidized uh, dollars for import. Then they import nothing and they use these dollars to sell them in the black market where, where the, the price of the dollar is about uh, four or five thousand or more. So obviously making a nice uh, profit. So I will say what has failed in Venezuela is not uh, socialism but the attempt to regulate capitalism to serve the interests of the majority. I could explain this point uh, longer, but I, uh, I've been told I've uh, reached the end of my time. My last point is just uh, this. Uh, I, I, there is clearly a, a big crisis in uh, Venezuela. We stand on the side of those who oppose the right-wing imperialist uh, coup that's being uh, attempted, the attempt to overthrow by force this uh, government, not because we think that we agree with all the policies of this uh, government, but rather because we think that if this opposition with these leaders comes to power, this will be a massive disaster for the working class and will throw back all the conquests that are still uh, left of the Venezuelan uh, revolution. That's our point uh, of view.